Welcome to What is the Bid Ask Spread? My name is Rodney Constable. I'm the president and founder of Simple Market Signals at simplemarketsignals.com. I'm also a former financial advisor and a former vice president and regional sales manager for Oppenheimer Funds, the mutual fund company. Whenever you buy a stock, an ETF, or an options contract, there is a bid and an ask price quoted for that investment vehicle. The bottom line is, you buy at the ask, you sell at the bid. Now, let's go back through that again, and I want you to memorize this. You buy at the ask, you sell at the bid. And the ask is always higher than the bid. The difference between the bid and the ask is known as the spread. So this is known as the bid-ask spread. The bid-ask spread is the profit for the market maker of that investment vehicle. Now, we're not going to get into what a market maker is on this uh, video. I do have another video on my YouTube channel uh, about you know what is a market maker, and I'll also leave a link to that video in the description box below this video, but I wanted to stay focused for your benefit. I wanted to stay focused on what the bid-ask spread is and how it works on this video. So we're going to stay focused on that. So next we're going to jump out to a website and take a look at a few stocks so you can see in real time in trading hours how the bid ask spread works and you're going to see that it basically constantly changes throughout the day. Okay, So we'll take a look at a couple stocks and then we'll come back and, and wrap this thing up. Okay, so I'm already out on the Chicago Board Options Exchange website. Now, this is not just for options, but I like to use this site because it's, it's easy, it's clean, uh, it's free, and you can get real-time quotes out here. Uh, and that's another thing, guys. You have to be, pay attention to are you looking at 20-minute delayed quotes, which is pretty standard, um, or are you looking at real live, real time quotes? So always know that, you know, what are you actually looking at? Okay. Um, so are you looking at delayed quotes or live quotes? Because those real time quotes can oftentimes uh, be much different, right? If it's a fast moving market, either up or down, there can be a, a pretty big difference. You look at a delayed quote, you go to make a trade, and then all of a sudden you're like, well, what is going on? This thing is, you know, 5, 10, 20 cents, 30 cents, a dollar different than, than what I was looking at. And it, it could be just that you're looking at a delayed quote, and then you actually go to make the trade, and, you know, and the stock has moved up or down or whatever, um, you know, since, uh, since that quote was, uh, was printed. So what we're looking at here is Apple, ticker symbol AAPL. And again, the site is www.cboe.com. That stands for the Chicago Board Options Exchange, but you can get stock quotes out there as well as option quotes. Okay, so you just type in the ticker symbol, hit the get quote button, and, uh, and then the quote comes up. And you can see here that I'm uh, recording this video on November 25th at 1040 a.m. Eastern Time. So the again, you and I buy at the ask, we sell at the bid, right? Apple is currently uh, being the ask price of Apple is $265.59, the bid price $265.58. So we can see that that bid ask spread is one penny apart. Okay, that's it, just one penny apart. And so again, that is that profit for the market maker. Uh, they're you know they're trading here 4.6 million shares already, so they're making a penny you know over and over and over again. Uh, but throughout the day, that bid ask spread will will change. Sometimes it's going to be a little bit wider. Sometimes uh, you know it'll be as narrow as a penny. You will rarely see the bid ask spread the same. But I suppose, in theory, it could happen. So let's go back up here and put in the ticker symbol for Facebook. And again, these are just random stocks that everybody knows, so that's why I'm using these. Uh, everybody's familiar with these things. So just to try to make the point of what this bid-ask spread is, how it works, where you can look at it. Uh, you can use other sites like uh, Yahoo Finance, which is www.finance.yahoo.com. I like the CBOE because you're not getting a lot of advertising. It's clean. It's it's you know you just click the real time. You can get delayed quotes or real time out here. Um, obviously, I like the real time quotes. But here we can see that Facebook currently is two hundred dollars sixty cents, and then the that's the ask. The bid is two hundred point five seven, right? Two hundred dollars fifty seven cents. So if you and I were to go in and place an order for 100 shares or even one share, let's say just one share of Facebook, 
it would be selling, for, we would put in the order at 200.6. Okay, if we're going to do a limit order, we would go in at the ask price. And then if we were selling, we would go in at the bid price. So 200.57, $200.57. So this is what we would get if we sold it. We would get the bid price. If we were to buy it, we would pay $200.60. The difference of three cents is the profit. That's the bid ask spread. That's what the market maker is making on a share of Facebook. Uh, let's try another one. Let's try Microsoft, which is MSFT. Let's get the quote there for Microsoft. Let's see where that's at. So we can see here that uh, Microsoft is currently trading. Uh, the ask price is uh, $150.80, and the bid price is $150.79. So again, just one penny apart. Okay. Now, if you if you look up uh, some small caps, all right, uh, you might see a wider, so a small, less liquid stock. You're probably going to see a wider, right, a, a bid ask spread. In other words, it could be five or ten cents apart instead of just a penny apart. These are uh, obviously very popular, very liquid uh, stocks that trade a lot, right? Millions and millions of shares. You can see, even though the market's only been open for a little over an hour, right? Market opens at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. It's 10.44 a.m. right now. Uh, Microsoft has traded over 4 million shares. Facebook and, and Apple, as you can see, had traded millions of shares as well. So, um, and we've got a pretty good rally going on today. So just uh, at least so far. So that's just uh, kind of uh, the nature of, of where the markets are at right now. Depending on when you're wa uh, watching this video, these prices could be drastically different. And again, this is not a recommendation for any of these stocks. This is just training on how to look at the bid-ask spread. Now, let's look at uh, an ETF that some of you may own. This is the oldest and largest ETF out there, by the way. Um, and no real-time data. So we've got to go to... Let's go back up here. I just uh, So that's kind of good training there. I didn't realize we couldn't get real-time data for that. <clears throat> so we'll go to, to delayed quotes, and let's get a delayed quote for that. So that's, uh, I didn't plan on that happening on this video, but hey, it's uh, that's good. Um, so we've got delayed options, delayed quotes and details. Um, all right, so let's just let's just roll with this. All right, again, I did not plan on that happening. I didn't rehearse any of this, but we can see here that the SPY, which by the way is uh, the largest ETF on the planet, it's the oldest ETF out there. Um, it is so when I say largest, that's assets under management. I'll make a whole nother video on that. But this is if somebody wanted to own the S and P five hundred, this is one way to do that. And you can see here that the uh, the ask price, right? If you're going to buy one share of this ETF, it would be three hundred twelve dollars ninety four cents. The bid price three twelve ninety three. Again, just one penny apart on that bid ask spread. And again, this is a delayed quote uh, on this this ETF. Okay, so now we're looking at an ETF. And down here, by the way, you can look at uh, you know if you calls and puts. If you've ever looked into options, uh, I use the CBOE for. Um, you know, when I'm doing options trading, I go out here and uh, check out the calls and the puts. I'll be making more videos on that, uh, on how to how to work with options going forward. But I just wanted you guys to understand on stocks, on ETFs, how to look at the bid ask spread. And if you're not familiar with the CBOE, which is the Chicago Board Options Exchange website, it's free. Just triple w.cboe.com. And again, just pay attention to whether you're using delayed quotes or live quotes. And as we just saw, and I didn't even know that, we couldn't get a live quote on SPY. Okay, so uh, SPY, the ticker symbol for the S&P 500 ETF. That's one. There's numerous S&P 500 ETFs, but that's, uh, that's uh, the largest and, and most popular ETF on the planet by assets is uh, SPY. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this. And again, this is uh, what well, you know. What let's take this one one level further, and just so you understand, let's um, since we're already here, let's go ahead and let's say we're going to buy. Now this is bonus material, right? Again, didn't plan on this. I'm going to go to a December, and if you don't understand all this, it's all right. Just stick with me, but because I want to make a point here uh, that that the bid ask spread extends to options contracts as well and you can kind of see it in, in down here in the calls and the puts but uh, let's just do um, an expiration uh, let's go 
uh, standard expiration. And again, if you don't understand it, it's okay. Near the money, December. And I just want to make a, a point here. All right. So if we were to buy a call, let's say we're buying the, uh, um, the 314 call on, um, on SPY with a December expiration. All right. In this case, it's going to dis uh, expire December 20th. I'm going to click right here and this will take us into this particular options contract. But again, you're going to see here that the ask price is 272. Okay. So $2.72 per contract right per hundred. So anyway, but uh, again, not to get too deep in the weeds here, but I just want you to understand whether it's a stock and option contract, uh, an ETF, they all had a have a bid ask spread. So again, $2.70, $2.72 with options, you multiply that by 100 generally. Um, so if we were to buy one December, uh, what is this, uh, the 314 on uh, call, on SPY right now, we would pay $272 to control 100 shares of SPY at a price of 314 between now and the end of December. So just so you understand, bid-ask spread, it's on stocks, it's on options contracts, it's on ETFs, okay? Not on mutual funds, but that's a conversation for another time. So I hope you've enjoyed this part of the video, and now let's jump back into the uh, the the rest of the video and wrap this thing up. I hope you enjoyed that look at a few stocks and how the bid ask spread works in trading hours, which uh, are nine thirty to four Eastern time. So uh, when you're out there looking, if you if you're looking before hours or after hours on the weekends, you'll notice that the bid ask spread can be very wacky. It can be very far apart, um, or it can be exactly the same, which is doesn't happen during trading hours. Uh, or it can be uh, static, you know, you won't see it changing, right? So, uh, but during regular trading hours from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that's when you will see that bid-ask spread act normally when you're, when you're looking at stocks, uh, options, contracts, ETFs, whatever it is, and you'll see that the, uh, the bid is lower than the ask, Okay, so you're going to buy at the ass, sell at the bid. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that look. But guys, if you would like to find out more about becoming a successful investor, I would highly suggest that you watch my information packed successful investor webinar. <clears throat> I put a ton of time into this thing. It took me several months just to write and, and construct this webinar. There is a ton of information in here. The webinar is about an hour long. Uh, please do yourself a favor and watch this webinar. It'll be one of the most important hours you ever invested in yourself. I promise you that. You're really going to enjoy it. I would encourage you to watch this with a pen and a pad to write, to write take notes or a Word doc or whatever, uh, however you take notes, your phone, whatever it is, because you're going to want to take notes. There's that much information in this thing. Uh, so please jump out to my YouTube channel, or I will also leave a link to this video, this webinar, in the description box below this video. But please go out and watch this. It'll, it'll be a fantastic hour that you've invested in yourself. So what are the next steps? First off, watch my Successful Investor webinar. You're really going to enjoy that. Also, watch my other YouTube videos. I put a lot in each one of these videos, so these are very information-packed. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for ongoing finance and success education. Give me a thumbs up on this and other videos that you like. Leave a comment on my videos, and please share my videos and my YouTube channel with your friends, family, and colleagues. Also, connect with me via social media. And thank you so much for being on this video with me. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.